Hello everyone and welcome to our last module in virtual reality in the classroom. And here's sort of a brief one, I suppose, where I'm just going to show you a little bit how to create your own 360 photos. And I'm just going to share some of the ways I've used this with my own students in my history classes. So one of the first things that I want to go back to here is I'm actually going to bring my phone uh, back on the screen here. And I'm in the uh, Street View app. Now one of the easiest ways uh, to take 360 photos is right with your own phone. Uh, using the Google Street View app. So here I'm, I'm on the app. And if you notice in the bottom right here, there's a little camera icon where you can link an, ex an external 360 camera, uh, which you can. You can go out. There's a lot of options out there. Um, you know, I was saving about five years ago. There was a lot on the market. And then I'll say in the last year or so, we haven't seen a lot of huge innovations in terms of 360 uh, cameras. So the ones that are out there are still really good, but they're not as expensive as they were maybe three or four years ago. So you can get a good one maybe for, you know, under $100. Some really nice ones in the hundred to three hundred dollar range and obviously some upper end range you know ones over four hundred dollars um, but they're really nice I, I do have one it's super easy I'm really not going to show it now all you do is hit a button and it takes one snapshot and takes a complete 360 photo or video as well now the other way you can do it is you could take a photosphere right, with, with your own camera with your own phone so if I click on this button right here uh, what you're going to notice is is it's going to bring up I'm actually just in my room right now and I can just keep on moving my cam my phone into different dots and it kind of you you know you kind of take your time and you can kind of go around and you can kind of you know make your own photo I'm going to stop there at this point um, but you kind of get the idea that you can use your own phone to make your 360 photo now it does take some time you gotta go slow you gotta be a little bit patient with it but it, it, it is possible, okay? Now, what I'll show you is I'll go to my profile here and I'm zoomed out on the map on, um, you know, on Google Street View. So uh, I did this particular shot of Fort George. It's in like Niagara on the Lake in uh, Canada. And I did this shot and it has what now over 6,000 views. I did it a couple years ago. Let's let it load up here. But I actually did this shot with my phone. I didn't have my camera with me, my 360 camera with me. And this takes a little bit of time to load. Usually it doesn't take this long to actually load. Um, so I'm not sure what the problem is. But uh, you'll see that it looks pretty good. I took my time. There was really no one around. And I was just kind of using my phone carefully. And it actually did work. Well, I'm sorry that one's not actually loading. It's making a liar out of me. But you can actually, it, it is there. Um, these I took at Old Fort Niagara on a field trip, actually with my 360 camera. Uh, so if I kind of scroll up through these, it was a very cloudy day. Um, but this was with my 360 camera. And I took these shots of the, of the fort, not with my phone, but with a 360 camera. And, you know, the same thing applies. We can put that into VR mode by just clicking uh, the top over, over here. Um, and I have a, a bunch of them. I took that day at Fort Niagara, uh, which is a lot of fun. And then, you know, here I have some other examples where, you know, I took some when we go on vacation, whether it be like Cape Cod. This one from Nauset Beach, believe it or not, has 33,000 views, which is a little bit crazy. Uh, Plymouth Beach, 10,000 views. And I think I did some more, but I got I to gotta go check. Um, but they're just a lot of fun. They're easy to do, and I just upload them. If you don't want to have your photos uh, public, you can also keep them private. So if I go to my private collection, I only have one. I just here the other a couple of weeks ago at the uh, Assateague National uh, Seashore in South of Maryland. I haven't published it yet. It didn't turn out that good. It was uh, I took it with my camera, and I kind of like um, skipped one of those dots. It was like a this kind of doesn't look that great. Um, but to, So if you take your time, though, it will look really good. So that's how you can kind of have some fun with you or your students can create their own 360 photos. Now, in terms of using this with your own content and your own curriculum, uh, I just want to show you some how way this has kind of progressed for me. Uh, so I started doing this with my Civil War course, I don't know how many years ago now, maybe like four years ago now, uh, where these students, I asked them to go out and find an historical photograph from the Civil War, which there's so many, then I asked them just to find a link uh, using Google Maps to the 360 view of that 
uh, place today. So that was just kind of a really easy thing back then. I don't even think we even had the viewers back then or we just started playing around with them. So this is inside Fort Sumter in South Carolina. And this was the historical photograph. So that was kind of neat. This is a really famous one of uh, the Dunker Church in Antietam. And if you click on this one, I think it always comes up at your feet. But if you scroll out and you look up, you can actually walk down this path. I can keep on walking, walking, walking down the path. And again, you can do this in your Google Cardboard viewers as well, just by clicking a little trigger button. And eventually, I can look over here, and there is uh, that. Sorry, I'm going to get you guys sick here. Whoops, sorry. There is that same church that's in the photograph. So I think that was that was kind of an awesome thing to do. And that's kind of, we kept it kind of simple. Uh, just kind of, you know, give me some examples of photographs with the 360 view. Now, um, then starting last year, I thought, you know what, we had the, the cardboard viewers. They were already making student websites. Well, why don't we use Google Sites to make a student website? This is actually a group website. This is our, our my military history class, so they all have their um, military group names. But it was the same idea where we were reading this book by James McPherson about the Battle of Antietam, and they had to find shots of the Battle of Antietam, uh, places that were mentioned in that book by James McPherson, and then do sort of the same kind of thing. Now, we kind of, you know, added more to it. They had to do a little more analysis. They had included 360 photo. They had to include the historical photo. They had to include the actual map where this place was. And then there was a link here to the 360 photo. Now the problem was, in all these examples, if students wanted to go view these on their phone, they actually had to go into the Street View app, search for this Fort Sumter National Monument, and then find it on their own. And it's possible, but it was a little clunky. There, it, it wasn't really connected well to the actual website. All right. Well, then this year, finally with Google Tour Creator, we kind of took it to the next level where we now, same idea, they're reading this book by James McPherson. Uh, they had to embed a map of the spot uh, in their website. They had to give us some analysis, some details of what the place is. Uh, then they had to find a, a historical photograph, but then they had to make their own virtual tour. So this was a virtual tour of the spot that's in the historical photograph, and they even have some uh, points of interest that we talked about in our last module. But you can now embed these Google tours right on your website. Or if you wanted to, you can kind of go to the top of the tour, hit this little icon, and it will bring it up just what we showed you in this sort of poly view. Here's their points of interest. There's a historical photograph. This was kind of nice. Uh, here was something else they added, a newspaper article that related to it. Uh, so basically what we modeled before they had this all in their own on their website but here was the better part now with that qr code we can now take this we can scan this qr code right and now i can bring this virtual tour up right on my phone so now students can actually view it in a much better environment than they could before which was just a lot easier right so i hope this really makes sense kind of way we kind of progressed from really simple Google Docs, some links to a student website with Google Sites, using Tour Creator, embedding maps, embedding images, and that's kind of how we all did it. So um, I think that was a lot of fun. So there's just some examples of how I use it with my own students. I hope you found this useful, and I hope you can share with us some ways you might use it with your own students as well. All right, take care, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.